Welcome to the Live to 110 podcast. I'm your host, Wendy Myers. You can find me on liveto110.com. If you didn't listen to last week's podcast, allow me to introduce my new co-host, Lee Lowry of generallee.com. Hello. Hello, everybody. Uh, she is a fitness expert and bodybuilder that is going to be my partner in crime from now on and teach you a thing or two about fitness, which I know you're dying to learn. Today we are interviewing Monica Bravo of bravoforpaleo.com. Monica is a contributor to live to 110com and I was really impressed with her site and the fact that you know she's still in college and has already written a book and I wanted to interview her about it on the show. Her book is called College Primal Challenge and it's about how to eat paleo while you're in college and how to navigate the school cafeteria and the food courts, which is really hard to do because when I was in college, I just wanted to eat everything in sight. That was all the bad food and fast food on the campus. But first, we have to do the dreaded disclaimer. Here we go. Please keep in mind that this program is not intended to diagnose or treat any disease or health condition, and it is not a substitute for, for professional medical advice. The Live to 110 podcast is solely informational in nature. Please consult your healthcare pr practitioner before engaging in any treatment or fitness regime that we suggest on this show. Well, thank you, Lee. <laughs> and if you're all geared up to meet some of your weight loss goals in 2014, I just put a new and improved version of my Live to 110 by Weighing Less e-guide on the site. If you want to learn about the latest science on weight loss or the modern paleo diet, my version of paleo, Go to live to 110com and sign up for my free 35-page Live to 110 by Weighing Less e-guide, where you'll also get my 14-part email series about the modern paleo diet, which is my new and improved version of paleo. It's all about taking paleo to the next level. And I'm really excited to announce that I'm done with the rough draft of my first book, The Modern Paleo Survival Guide. I can't even believe it. And uh, I wanted to write this book to show you know, everyone how, to, again, to take paleo to the next level. And the book is all about surviving in our modern world. Because in my opinion, it's just not enough to eat a paleo diet to be healthy. We need to be eating the most nutrient-dense foods allowed on a paleo diet. So this book has a million tips on how to choose and cook the most nutrient-dense foods for maximum nutrition. Sadly, many foods that were once healthy in paleo times are not healthy today due to toxins and contamination in our modern food supply. So I teach you how to navigate these toxic foods. And lastly, the book is about how you can eat the healthiest paleo diet in the world, but you're not going to live to uh, live a long disease-free life unless you detox from heavy metals and industrial chemicals that plague our modern environment. It's just a modern reality. And I have a chapter called Detoxify or Die in the book that goes into exactly how and why you need to detox. It's a little bit dramatic, but it is, uh, you know, you, if you don't detoxify, you are uh, very likely going to fall ill and die an early death. Unfortunately, it's kind of dramatic, but it's true. So that's the book in a nutshell. So look for that for sale on the site in March 2014. So uh, so basically, our show today is about how to eat eat a healthy diet in college. So Lee, did you did you eat healthy in college? Oh my God, I was totally thinking about this, and I was excited that Monica is where she's at in her life and her age and stage because I thought back to my college career and it was full of top ramen and uh tortinos pizza rolls and you know I was just like in a rush and on a budget and I didn't have the information I think that there is out there today so I would say that it was like a carb sodium festival for me <laughs> I don't know about you what about you uh, it was ugly. I just, it, you know, because I at that time, you know, it wasn't even on my radar. Eating healthy wasn't on my radar. I thought, well, I'm a smart person. I eat healthy. And I, I thought if I ate a salad once a week, I was doing really, really good. Yeah. But it was totally a cereal in the morning. I thought I was eating a super healthy, nutritious breakfast for under 200 calories if I had a, a bowl of freaking Frosted Flakes. You know, because... It's so funny, like, uh, you think 
we're all, all three of us are Southern women, as we talked about before. And I think one of the funny things is my mom puts broccoli next to macaroni and cheese and fried chicken. And she's like, well, we, you know, we've got the broccoli, so it's healthy. Oh, yeah. Oh, and I thought that the, your morning cereal was healthy because it has all these sprayed on vitamins. And I'm looking at the, <laughs> the I'm looking at the RDAs. I'm like, oh, it's 100 percent of vitamin C. And look, <laughs> it has iron and it's healthy. Right. And so it's just uh, one of those things where I thought I was healthy, but I was really uh, eating, for the most part, gluten all day and uh, Domino's pizza and just all kinds of GMOs. I had no clue about GMOs at all. So, not on my radar. <laughs> well, today I'm thrilled to introduce my friend, Monica Bravo. Uh, she is currently a student at Louisiana State University in the Honors College with a biochemistry major and anthropology and business minors. Her plans are to become a doctor and treat patients holistically using food as the greatest form of medicine. Sounds like a good idea to me. And she just finished her first book, College Primal Challenge, that we're going to be talking about today. And I'm so impressed that she's in college and she wrote a book already. I hate you. <laughs> so, Monica, how are you? <laughs> I'm great. It's great to be here. I'm really excited. Well, so why don't you tell the listeners a little bit about yourself to start? Okay. I'm Monica Bravo, and I blog over at bravoforpaleo.com, as Wendy said. And I blog about living this paleo lifestyle in college, which I've been doing myself for about two years, a little bit over two years, but it took a little transitioning to figure it out and learn all the information for the first like six months. And um, I actually got into this lifestyle after my father, um, an Ironman triathlete, had a stroke while after he did P90X. And then six months later, while doing CrossFit, he had a third degree heart block. And he was diagnosed with a 90% LAD blockage, which um, they call the widow maker. And he now has four stents and a pacemaker. So he made it his mission to find out why the wheels came off for him. And um, we kind of basically figured out that it was not about the exercise and everything was about the food. So to make a long story short, he came to the paleo lifestyle. And at that point, it just... It made sense for me to adopt the lifestyle too. That's how I found it too, is uh, my father having all kinds of health problems and then unfortunately passing away from his treatment from esophageal cancer. So I, it's, you know, and also our parents getting ill is a very powerful, mm -hmm. life changing force that makes you, you know, look for answers of why, you know, right. for me it was I didn't want to end up like my father. I didn't want to die like him. But, but my father smoked, he never exercised, like he kind of signed up for that. Right. Um, but your father, it's got to be really confusing for him and for you, exactly. this strong, and, and he, fit man. Like, same, same thing, he thought he was eating healthy and, um, and he, you know, he ate the standard American diet and same thing. If he had broccoli on the plate, he thought it was healthy, but, you know, it, we figured it out and we're both so much happier right now and his plaque and his arteries has not progressed any further and he's felt he feels better than he ever did and he's leaner than he was when he was training like we're triathlons and stuff so it's amazing he's like thinner and leaner now than he has ever been so is he following a real strict paleo diet yes both of us do he's a little bit more um like in the ketogenic than i am but i do more CrossFit training and things like that. So I eat more carbs than him, but like I eat sweet potatoes and things like that. But um, yeah, he's he's strict paleo. So okay, well, good for him. That's mm -hmm. you know he's lucky to have been able to find that and not you know just kind of if he did what his doctors just said, he probably wouldn't be doing too oh, hot. Yeah, his doctors told him actually take the pills and don't do anything with your diet. Wow. And um, a, a few of them said that, and he said I'm getting a new doctor. <laughs> Because he wanted, he knew he needed to change something. So if he wanted to stay living to see his grandkids and things like that, so. Yeah, my, unfortunately my father was such a brilliant man, but he was 100% faithful in Western allopathic medicine. Mm -hmm. And without realizing that it's wonderful, but it does have shortcomings. There's a myopia and that everything is treated with drugs and surgery, so. You know, he actually had some surgery to remove his esophageal tumor, and then it was just, 
everything on the diet, there's a diet list he was given, everything was horrible for you. <laughs> and I yeah. couldn't believe it. I'm like, how on earth is he going to heal eating these right. foods? Yeah. It's not going to happen, and it didn't happen. Mm -hmm. um, so unfortunately, um, I'm glad your father was questioning of his doctors. So, so, so is that part of the interest you have in uh, becoming a doctor and what you're studying in college? Yes, definitely. Like once he had started to kind of research and find out what the problem was, we both started reading a lot of books on paleo and just nutrition books. He actually found the diet by um, reading the book Track Your Plaque, which is written by the same guy who wrote Wheat Belly. Yeah. And um, he so he read that book first and then kind of found it through that. And um, and I started reading all the time just for fun. And so I was like, I'm really interested in the biochemistry of all of this and what's really going on in our bodies. And that's how I kind of confirmed that I wanted to be a doctor. I've always had interest in science, but um, that really confirmed it for me that I, I wanted to be able to work with patients every day and and help them through diet. So do you want to be be a medical doctor or a naturopathic doctor or what, or what um, are you thinking? I'm, I'm going to get um, an MD first and then decide. So um, yeah, I want to go to a, a normal medical school and then see if I want to go with some more natural approach after and see if I want to like further my education with that, which okay. I probably will. So. so you're a closet nerd. Yes, closet nerd. <laughs> closet nerd. I, I love studying and I love school a little bit too much. So I am yeah. too. I'm actually going back to school soon myself. That's great. Great. I'm going to really um, I want that nerd to fully blossom inside of me. <laughs> I know. It's just a great feeling. So, And now I'm like, I, I love school, but I love blogging and I love learning about things online too. So it's kind of like a constant struggle if I should be reading my textbook or my, you know, blogs like yours and stuff. So yeah. Well, so let's talk about your book a little bit. It's called okay. The College Primal Challenge. So why did you feel compelled to write this book? Well, um, my friends and a, a lot of other people my age were continually asking me to help them start eating like I do. And I was surprised by it because when I first started eating this way, I, um, I didn't think anyone would want to like make that kind of commitment and get healthier. I didn't think really anyone cared. So I wasn't just going around talking to people about it. They would just see me like avoid the pizza or see me avoid the candy. And they, so they it was kind of like just leading by example and then all of them wanted to know. And when I got in the sorority, a lot of the girls were like extremely interested because they wanted to lose weight. A lot of them want to lose weight or some of them have digestion problems or they exercise and they but they know they eat terribly. Like so, they're really good looking but they have diarrhea exactly. all the time. Exactly. <laughs> they're thin, they're thin but they're sick. And yeah. so um I guess after I started the blog, I realized like people need guidelines, in particular the people my age who have to deal with all these stresses. So um, I also think like my generation's more receptive to accepting all of these ideas because they don't really know what's healthy and what's not, and they know that they don't know. So um, when I would start telling them about the paleo diet, what I did, and how I avoid grains. Um, a lot of them were just like, oh, is that, is that what's healthy? Okay, like I, I might try that out. So just a lot of different people knew I ate that way and would, you know, like find me on Facebook and be like, hey, do you think you could like talk to me about eating this way in college? How do you do it? So basically the ebook is just guidelines on what is paleo in the simplest way and then how can you possibly do this at college and then some recipes. Yeah, it's really hard because when you're at, like, for instance, I went to USC and I did the entrepreneurship program there and one of the f former students, um, they came up with Carl's Jr. 
that was born of the USC Entrepreneurship School. So there's a Carl's Jr. on the campus. And I would just, it would be like this tractor beam that I'm like trying to walk away from it. No, no. But then when I'd be really stressed at finals time, I would succumb and right. gobble down my nasty, you know, hash browns. And right. And I think it's a lot about preparation. Um, as far as like for me, my two roommates actually eat paleo too because once we started living together, it was just easier for us to cook together and um, plan our meals together and it's cheaper. So if you kind of buy in bulk and then just all cook the same thing. Or did you so, crack the whip like, you must eat paleo? <laughs> yeah, no. They, <laughs> It was funny because, like, the first year, one, my roommate, she doesn't cook at all. And so I was cooking every night for whatever I was eating. And she would just be like, okay, I'm going to buy what you buy, and you can just cook double. So that worked out. And then um, my other roommate who moved in with us, she'd always been really health conscious. So she um, she used to do the counting calories thing, too. And both of us did in high school. We were dancers. And um, so we, we both cared about being thin and once we started adopting this lifestyle, both of us, she um, also found like, we both just have like a healthier relationship with food. And I think that's like a huge thing for people my age is the girls struggle with having a good relationship and seeing that food is actually fuel and nourishment and you need to eat. So stuff like that. Yeah, so uh, what's the stoplight grading system that you develop in the book? What's that all about? Okay, so in the, in the book, I in order to explain like which foods are the best and the worst for you, I use a stoplight, just saying that red foods mean you need to avoid them at all costs. Yellow foods mean you should be cautious about them, and green green foods are completely paleo. So um, I was I used this analogy to explain healthy eating to one of my friends, and they thought it made a lot of sense. And the more green foods you eat, the better success you're gonna have where the um, yellow foods are things like dairy that maybe you're lactose intolerant and you need to avoid dairy and maybe, you know, different, just different things that are on the borderline of I'm not sure if they're going to help you or hurt you and you need to be cautious about them. So, and the red foods are, of course, processed foods and um, most grains and things like that. Yeah, and so I like how you give instructions on how to navigate a paleo diet in the school food court and cafeteria because that's what every day the reality of what college kids are faced with is all this just horrifying array of tasty food. And so what, what kind of pointers do you give to them to make better choices? Um, I'd say the biggest advice I give in the book is to look for meat and vegetables and avoid the processed foods and the packaged foods. And... Um, in the book, I give some typical fast food type restaurants that I know are at my school and are at most colleges, and I tell you what food on their menu is green and yellow. Um, but I, I think it would be a disservice to tell them that the fast food restaurants are okay, but there are some healthier options in the food court and cafeteria. For instance, like there's a huge salad bar, and many of the restaurants, like if you ask them to grill the chicken or grill the meat they'll grill it for you and um yeah so. yeah I know I used to go to Carl's Jr. when I was at college and I ordered the chicken sandwich on whole grain bread and I <laughs> I was like oh it's so healthy right it's got a big green chili on it and right <laughs> so exactly the Santa Fe chicken sandwich it's so <laughs> yummy I still dream about it <laughs> yeah I mean it's actually surprising like it's not as hard as everyone thinks. There's so many options now. They have so many restaurants on campus in, in the union or um, the cafeteria has a huge salad bar. So there, and there's grilled chicken and there's tons of vegetables, there's fruit, there's eggs in the morning. So it's possible. And I, I know like it's possible because I've done it and I talk to other, I, I know other people who do it. So I just want to put it out there and tell people it's possible. So your website, it's very focused on recipes, and you've contributed uh, many recipes to live210.com that were really popular. And um, so what kind of recipes do you have in the book? I have five breakfasts, five lunch, five dinner, five microwave meals, which are for the dorm room people. And then I have a list of snacks that are my go-to snacks. So although I shy away from the microwave and... 
most of my friends do live in apartments, so they don't need to eat microwave food, but I realize that the dorm room college kids have no other option. So I do have five microwave meals that you can um, cook. Yeah, well, you have to be practical. Right, exactly. I have to, it's it's a realistic thing. So, I, like, if people could just give up the fast food and the processed foods, I know that would solve 70, 80% of the problems, so. Yeah, I'm sure a whole, if you did a whole cookbook on microwave paleo, it would be a New York Times bestseller. Yes, that's actually, <laughs> that's actually my, um, my next thing I'm thinking of. I've already been testing a bunch of microwave stuff because I want to write that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. we know that every college kid's favorite pastime is alcohol. So what's the 411 on alcohol in your book? Well, basically I go through telling you where different alcohols stand on the grading system. But I also believe in order to get amazing results with this challenge, alcohol should be like limited. Um, I tell people like five to six drinks a month would put you at your yellow phase, but granted those drinks are approved ones, not ones filled with sugars and daiquiris and martinis and things like that. So the hard part I think about this is that college kids, most of my friends want to drink their five to six drinks in one night. So I think it's, it takes more than, um, it's going to take more than you know, that it's this lifestyle is requiring you to change your way of thinking. It doesn't have to be the normal to drink every night and never sleep and eat junk food. And I, I know a lot of my friends are seeing that, especially when some of us who lead by example and will go out and only have one drink or go out and not drink and still have fun, that it's, it's still possible to do that and get your sleep and eat right and you'll make better grades because of this and that's why we're at school in the first place what you can have fun without doing beer bombs right exactly (laughs) i could have never fathomed that in college it's hard to believe but you can (laughs) so what kind of alcohols do you think are paleo and that you recommend to um i usually would i I recommend like red wines and um and tequila and water usually those are like the two go-to drinks I tell people to go with and I know a lot of people buy wine already that's not like a weird thing so and they drink tequila so a lot of my friends have already changed to just that being their only change and um have been really happy with that instead of drinking a bunch of sugary drinks and then they have a sugar hangover the next day too and an alcohol hangover so a lot of my friends are will ask me what to drink and then they end up just drinking red wine and tequila water whenever we go out and it's a lot better. Yeah, I had a brilliant idea when I was in college once to drink Grand Marnier all night, (laughs) (laughs) which is just such concentrated sugars and I, that was a horrifying day the next day. (laughs) Horrifying. It happens, yeah, but I think... It's like a learning, like with anything with food and health, it's a learning experience. If that alcohol works for you and um, and there's no sugar, then maybe that one's for you. And if some vodka, they do have potato vodka and some of my friends do that. And I'm trying to get that in the bars so that people can have that instead of, you know, all the other crap they're drinking. Well, but, what about beer? A lot of, you know, the college males and females too really love their beer. What's your stance on right. beer? I, I just tell them you got to get rid of it. You got to, you have to, if you want to be serious about this, you're going to have to get rid of the beer and switch over to wine and, or tequila. And a lot of them just, they know it's bad for them and they're still drinking it. So a lot of them, a lot of them have changed their ways just because of that. Most of my friends, the girls, especially the guys, a few of them will, will give it up just for this. Cause so. the beer is full of gluten. Right. It's, exactly. It's and that's made, what I tell them. So yeah. It's made from fermented barley. I don't think a lot of them realize that. <laughs> yeah, and there's gluten-free beers, but you don't really see that around very much. No, not at not at the bars we're going to. <laughs> and they're not at that you know Keystone price point, you know nope, exactly. Not at all. <laughs> Twelve pack of Keystone. Uh, yeah, I know William, uh, Doctor William Davis. You know, forget Wheat Belly. He needs to write a book called uh, Beer Belly. Exactly. You know? <laughs> so, what do you think is uh, the most pressing health issue in the world today? Um, I think it's mostly misinformation, but, um, luckily with the internet, people are spreading the good news about 
just eating real food and embracing a paleo type lifestyle. And um, too many people, I just, I think too many people don't understand that it's not all about calories and it's not just about exercise and there's, there's just so much more to it. Yeah. So where can people find you on the internet if they want to read your blog and get some of your recipes and buy the new book? They can find me on my website, which is bravoforpaleo.com. And my Facebook page is facebook.com slash bravoforpaleo. And I'm on Twitter and Pinterest as well, which are linked to on my site. So, so when do you graduate? I graduate in 2016. So oh, wow. Maybe a semester early. I haven't decided, but... Um, probably 2016. So what can people expect from you in 2014? Well, um, in the past six months, my blog has grown incredibly. I just started blogging during the summer and now I'm getting about 65,000 views a month. So I'm just going to continue blogging because it's working out for me. And I, I love being able to talk to my readers and just produce new stuff that they like. And I expect to do um, some more podcasts and connect with some other bloggers. I really enjoy talking to other people about these pressing topics. And it's always great to learn more from people who know more than me, people like you, and read your blogs, things like that. So this is my second podcast. The first one was with um, Jimmy Moore. And I just really enjoy talking to other people and being able to share my like youthful perspective on the lifestyle. So yeah, it I is. Really I appreciate mean, the, you having me. <laughs> yeah, the paleo movement it needs more young people because you know people right. like to follow people that their age. Exactly. So, so I think that's great that you're. It's I think it's really important that you're focusing in on helping students in college because we know that college kids tend to eat a horrifying process exactly. and it's like a it's a really important time to be eating healthy because you need your brain to be working at its best and I know for myself whenever I'm not eating the best things or the few times I've ever like got glutened by stuff I just feel so out of it for a day or two and I'm I, I just can't imagine living like that every day and trying to study you know yeah I think people just become acclimatized they just don't it's like a fish in water they just right. they don't realize they just feel they have su- no subpar. Idea. Yeah, they have no idea until they start eating better. So Yeah. I really like what you said earlier, you know, about when you when you found out about your father and and where you stand on the fact that you, you know, from a fitness perspective, I think a lot of people think that they can counteract a bad diet with mm-hmm. exercise and not have any kind of like health problems because of it. And that's something I run into in the fitness world is people want to eat what they want to eat. And then they want to work out to counteract that. And that's just not the way it works. So I'm I'm really thankful to have you as well on the show to kind of express that point. Um, Exactly. Yeah, Yeah. I know. When I was in college, I could not figure out. I was was trying to kind of figure out a way I could have a carton of Haagen-Dazs strawberry ice cream every (laughs) night. (laughs) <laughs> and just work it off at the gym and I just and lose weight and I just couldn't it, it didn't compute it doesn't no <laughs> yeah and so um, so Monica thank you so much for coming on the show and thanks for you know telling us a little bit about your book and if you want to go go buy her book it's available right now on her site bravoforpaleo.com if you want to do a college primal challenge so, and if you want to learn more about the paleo diet, weight loss, or how to do a serious detox, you can find me on live to 110com You can follow me on Facebook and Twitter at I Will Live to 110 And I'm also on YouTube. I've got a bunch of really unprofessional videos over there <laughs> at Wendy Live to 110 I'm working on getting them a little better, okay, for you guys. They're awesome. They're awesome. <laughs> I watched it and I'm like, should I really be on YouTube? Should I really be doing this? They're so bad. Uh, but at the time I shot most of them, I was had some thyroid issues. when I And so I just like, I can't find my words or my thoughts. And I've got a lot better now. But, <laughs> um, but you guys can also find me on Instagram and Pinterest. You don't have to watch any bad videos there. I'm on uh, live to 110 is where you can find me. And Lee, what about your site? Where can people find you? Uh, well, now, uh, www.generallee.com. I'll be blogging on there. Uh, you can find me on Instagram at Jen Lee, G-E-N-L-E-I-G-H. I also have on Facebook, follow my fit foods so you can see what I'm eating and how I'm living on a regular basis. And then 
my YouTube channel is under Lee Lowry or General Lee, and I will be posting glute routines. So how we talked about this last week, but how to make that big kind of rounded tush that all of us women want. I'm going to be doing very specific routine on there this week uh, and posting that so you women can learn how to get that big rounded tush that we all want. Ooh, I got to watch yeah. that. <laughs> and that's it. Um, if you like what you've heard on this show, please give the Live to 110 podcast a review on iTunes. We would absolutely appreciate it so much. And everyone, thanks for tuning in. Remember, if you're in college, you will do yourself a huge favor by eating a healthy diet. One, to prevent the college, typical college 15 that students tend to gain, but also because the time to be thinking about your health is while you still have it. So thank you so much for listening to the Live to 110 podcast.